Hello everyone, happy Halloween, and welcome to a very special <laughs> episode of Children of Erte. Uh, this evening we shall be taking a slight detour from our usual events, uh, but we will stick to the general plan, and Adam, would you please tell us about today's sponsors? Yo-ho, yo-ho. Spooky yo -ho. sponsors. Yeah. <laughs> Our incredible sponsors, thank you so much, <laughs> Idol Champions of the Forgotten Realms. They are gifting an Electrum chess code. You can find it on the overlay or bouncing around in chat. Thanks for your support. We have Die Hard Dice, who has supplied our cast with Jen Kretschmer's Crafty Crushers of Creeps. Yes. I was a big fan of that one. Amazing. Um, That's a good one. Crafty Crushers of Creeps. So thank you so much, Die Hard, for all of the support throughout the campaign. You can get 10% off your order in their store with the code Erte, And we're also giving away a $20 promotional gift code for you to use. So good luck with that. And finally, tonight, you'll hear the dulcet tones of Sirenscape because epic games need epic sound. I'm Adam Bradford, CDO at Demiplane, and we're going to, you know, do, do a little ditty here, all right, to introduce Silas tonight. So, you know, you've got a chance, oh Silas, my God. Silas Sorrell, at the appropriate times. You'll know what I mean in a moment. Uh, not people on the cast because the stream delay would kill this and I would never be able to get through everything. But here we go. Are you ready, kids? I can't hear you. Yes. Oh, who's stuck in a murder trap under the sea? I was. Not really yeah. his thing. He's more a land thief. If red psychic nonsense be something you seek, then tune into Twitch and watch this big geek. Ready? Silas Sorrel, Silas Sorrel, Silas Sorrel, Silas Sorrel. Woo! Genius. Dang it. My smile is ruining my ghoulish appearance right. here. I'm too, too in love with all of you to look spooky. <laughs> Back to business. Pull yourself together. Uh, <laughs> Hey everybody, I'm Alicia Marie, and you can find me on social at Alicia Marie Body, and I'm a costume artist, and it's Halloween, so guess what? I'm sleeping for the next two weeks and telling everyone to leave me alone, but for tonight, I'll be playing Fearuz Armstrong. <laughs> I certainly <you> lie. <laughs> that was amazing. <laughs> Wasn't expecting that. <laughs> <laughs> it's the most wonderful time of the year. <laughs> okay. Hello. <laughs> Hi, I'm Jen Crutchford. You can find me on socials at Dream with Jen. Um, I'm here to uh, because my childhood trauma is your childhood trauma. So you know. <laughs> Go read in a dark, dark house. Um, and I was about to enjoy. say, don't laugh too hard, or your head will fall. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, only if I untie the ribbon. Only if I untie the ribbon, and then we're all in trouble. Um, uh, but tonight, I am playing your friendly neighborhood troublemaking terror of traumatizing childhood stories, Maeve Morgan Flynn. <laughs> Hi, I'm Carolyn Stern. I usually help out at a bakery, but um, tonight I'm a squirrel. I have the best costume. People told me to show up in costume, and you know what? I have the best you costume. Brought it. I, because I just became a squirrel. And I am Robin Beckett, who dresses up <laughs> like Robin Beckett, because <laughs> when you've done as many things as I've done in my life and worn as many costumes as I have, okay. you just think that being yourself is the best way to be. Yes. Yes. And I am Deborah Ann Wool, your spooky storyteller for this evening, who will try not to smile so much. Um, Anyways, welcome this evening. Get yourself something warm and a little bit uh, tangy, maybe, uh, to enjoy this evening's episode of Children of Air Day. Now, not so long ago, you all took a rest together, thinking, oh, 
I will feel so safe here. We don't need to take any watches. And you all fell asleep at the same time. In this moment, as has happened before to many of you, um, you collectively experienced a dream. And tonight, we will see what that dream entailed. So, you all appear in an entryway. It is a beautiful hallway. There are lovely plush carpets, uh, leather armchairs, a warm fire burning in the corner. Um, as you look around you, there are no windows in this room. There is only one set of large uh, double doors in one wall. As you look around, you see four others. Interesting, you don't seem to know them personally who they are they are strangers to you but as you take a closer look you start to remember that you are aware of the myths and legends surrounding these other great hunters hunters like yourself what would you like to do who the hell are you <laughs> oh i'm sorry uh do, do we? You guys look vaguely familiar. Don't we know each other somehow? Well, haven't you seen my picture in the paper? I've done quite a bit of exploring in my day, and I'm actually quite surprised that you don't know who I am. Are you a squirrel? <laughs> I mean, I do like to find treasures, if that's what you mean. But no, my name is uh, Carolyn Squirrels. <laughs> yes, hi. I was going to say, are you saying that she's squirrely? I might be that too. I'd buy that. But no, I'm I'm Carolyn Stern. Uh, can I help any of you? Are you also here for whatever I'm here for? Well, I just happened across this place. I'm a local door-to-door -door vacuum salesman. Back in my day, this is the best job I've ever had. And here we are. It's... I feel like something's afoot here. Afoot? A vacuum. I don't need either. Do you have a broom anywhere? What? So I can fly. I'm a witch. I need a broom. God, you guys, come on. <laughs> I'm sorry. You're a witch and you did not bring your own broom. No, I left it at the way station. Someone actually stole it and drove it off into the night. That's why I'm here. We've been assembled no to find your... We're, we're hunting your broom, you say? Perhaps. It's one of the things that I hope I come across in whatever we're about to do. My well, brain. maybe I can upsell you on a vacuum. Your brooms, brooms do not do the floor justice. You need a good Dyson ball vacuum. Have you ever seen a witch on a Dyson? <laughs> Is it cordless? Ah, uh, no. I'm glad it's better. <laughs> Let me sell you on why the cord is good. Let me think about that. You haven't seen her on a on a vacuum because it's so much more effective. Ooh. You just fly further. And I can make a lot more noise. What about you? Speaking of noise, you're not making any. You with the eye patch on. Who are you? Are you talking to me? Yes. I don't know what all of this blabbering about is, is, is going on for. I'm here for a job. So I'd say we just wait to hear what that job is. Fine by me. I was just going to stand over here by the fire and uh, roast some nuts. Do you have some nuts to roast? Always. There are always nuts to roast if you know what you're doing. <laughs> and Maeve sort of hikes up her trench coat. Oh, yes. Leggy, leggy steps as she, she sashays over to the, to the fire. Well, then <laughs> you are you are silhouetted by the aura from the fire. You and Neb perfectly backlit, uh, you know, behind the hair. It, it alights here and somehow only your eyes are also lit in this dark space. <laughs> Might I add that you all look so specifically spooky right now in this light. I have no idea what we're doing here. Does anyone know exactly why we've been summoned here? Besides Cyrus looking for the vacuum. Cigarette. It up. Somehow I imagine Silas has some sort of 
uh, you know, deeply etched scar across his face. He's got a bad eye. Oh, yeah. Well, what I don't know when. Hmm? Good question. The smoke lofts atmospherically around Silas's visage. Are you talking to me? Yes, you. Why are you talking like me? Oh, I'm talking like you. Sorry, voice is matching mine. It's sorry, I didn't mean to. Do that. Sometimes I'm talking to people. Sometimes I pick up the eye because I'm a mistake. I'm sorry. I'll, I'll stop. But anyway, what happened to your face? A dark cloud a passes <laughs> over Silas's face. How did you do that? It was with a sword. I stopped it from penetrating my skull. Who did you stop from penetrating your skull? Bad people. That's what I do. Ah, so you're the muscle in this group, I guess. It's good to know. Last time I had to go on a whole mission, I had to be the muscle, and it was a bad time, let me tell you. Gross generalization. What? I'm not making a generalization. You said you stopped a sword from going into your skull. I would imagine that makes you pretty awesome. Ooh. You said it, not me. If only my second husband had been so lucky. <laughs> what happened to your second husband? Wasn't so good at stopping the sword. Was he the nuts that got roasted? <laughs> it's quite an impertinent question to ask. Sorry, I apologize. Sometimes I do overstep my boundaries. Oh, but here's some nuts. Oh, thank you. Extra salty. Mm -hmm. You know... As a door-to-door -door vacuum salesman, I must say, um, where were you the night of the murder? Which one? Dun -dun. <laughs> Who? I'm not sure. Sorry, I got very distracted by the fact Where that... were you? Where were you? Where were you? Where was you? I? You where were all tucked you? in, sleeping your safe, calm little lives. Some of us were out there ridding the world of the evil that keeps us up awake at night or something. I object. Leading the witness. I'm, oh, I'm sorry. It's a fascination of mine, the law. You really are all over the place. <laughs> you find that the, the, the gavel that you banged normally you know, you have things that, that do that for you, but you, you picked up something off of the the table next to one of the armchairs. It's an old pipe, very nicely or innately decorated. It's already all packed, ready to go. Has one of you packed my belongings for me? Are, was it a pipe? As in a, a pipe, a, like a, a pipe Sherlock to Holmes smoke. Pipe? Yes, a Sherlock or, or, Holmes pipe. Or a Captain with uh, tobacco. Colonel Mustard in the, okay. Sherlock Holmes pipe packed with, some, with tobacco. Oh, I see what you're reading. Tobacco leaves, yes. No, All ready a, to be It was smoked. a steel pipe. It was. I, I, I wasn't <laughs> sure. Look, we're in a totally you're plausible clue it. scenario, so. <laughs> Listen. <laughs> what? <laughs> Okay. I'll admit it. I packed your things. I knew we were going to be leaving soon, and I kind of assumed that we were going on a globe-trotting adventure. So I just made sure that you had everything that you needed. I'm very good at packing away things for later. The walls begin to kind of come into <laughs> perspective, as things do in dreams. And some pieces are not quite as clear until you give them your attention. You notice that while there are no windows, there are indeed draperies surrounding just wallpaper um, as if they were expecting a window to be there but there is none i look for musical notes <laughs> give me an investigation <laughs> check please <laughs> it's the nuts. that's a three there are no musical notes on the curtains but a part of you feels maybe you hear distant organ music 
either from somewhere very far away or perhaps the inner reaches of your own mind. Can I look at the wallpaper where the windows should be? Absolutely. Investigation check, please. Can I investigate these curtains? Are they dusty? <laughs> please make an investigation check, please. A uh, dirty 20. A dirty 20. Um, as you go and begin to look at the wallpaper, you see a slight pattern that seems to be creating, even though these are little fleur de lis and flowers and things of that type, they seem to be creating arrows, all pointing in the same direction. Robin. Uh, 17. The Ooh. curtains are pristine. They look as they've been washed and hung yesterday, ironed out, steamed out all the wrinkles. Um, these are clean and well taken care of curtains. What's does in that, the direction? Oh, go ahead, sorry. Oh, does that kind of stay in theme of the rest of the house? Is this a very clean house, old house? As you start to look around, it is old-fashioned. There's there's a sense of austerity and, and age to these items, but everything is meticulously kept. I have a question. Whose home are we in? Who found the pipe? Uh, Feruza found the pipe. I found the pipe and I used it as a gavel. <laughs> <laughs> was there anything on it? Did it, was there any? No, it was just packed very tight. <laughs> as if someone did it for me. Maybe a squirrel. Maybe. <laughs> now that you've banged it all over like a gavel, I don't think you're gonna find it's as finely packed anymore though yeah I'll, I'll pick it up i'll put it together again <laughs> at least the table is gonna smell like well, whatever was in there anyway ah you can clean that up great with the extension that you have on your dyson box i can give you a a, a sample for it uh, just a quick demonstration <laughs> <laughs> Amazingly, there's a plug in the wall uh, just underneath the curtain that you've been examining. You plug in your vacuum and it sparks <laughs> right into life. You begin vacuuming up the loose cigar leaves, you know, tobacco Thank leaves you. that fell to the ground. Wow, you may have sold me one of those. That was amazing the way you picked those up. It's not me, it's all the vacuum. It sells I himself. Think I said, you might have sold me one. I didn't say it was a closed ah, deal. Ah, the night see. is young. The night is young. Well, maybe if we're all paid well for whatever we're here for, then I'll buy one of those vacuums too. But first, we're we have to figure to out paid? what we're here for. I oh, mean, I don't, I don't work for exposure. No, no one should ever work for just exposure. No, no one should ever work for exposure. Ah. Or, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Do any of you hear that fine music? Mm. I'd hear it faintly. Where are the arrows? Just my internal soundtrack. <laughs> Where are the arrows pointing? So as you begin to watch them from sort of the, you know, far wall, they all kind of point, and then they diverge and point in the other direction. They all seem to be pointing towards those large double doors opposite the fireplace. Did y'all notice that the doors? That's. That seems to be the way the room is indicating we go. Wait, there are voices in the room that tell you to go somewhere? No, there are errors on the wallpaper. Oh, okay, that. All right, that's fine. Put that we in can your do pipe that. and smoke it. Now that it's empty, it's right there on the table. <laughs> I would not recommend smoking the wallpaper. Although, if, if that is a subtle indication of which way we are supposed to go, I have gotten tired of waiting for our benefactor, so let's go and... I will yeah. immediately start walking with <laughs> purpose and confidence yeah. in front of everyone for some weird reason towards the door. Yeah. Follow the squirrel. Ro Robin puts the vacuum kind of on her back like a Ghostbusters backpack yes. with all, like the extension and kind of puts it back. Lightweight? In. <laughs> Portable. What you need yes. in a vacuum. It looks Portability. Like it might as well. Especially someone who's going to ride one outside of the house, and I will open the door. 
one of the double doors. As you move over to the double door and a finger touches the knob, um, you hear a voice coming from somewhere in the room. Why, hello there. (laughs) Trying to leave, are you? I whirl around and look for the voice. That was dramatic. Thank you. (laughs) You see no one. Who is there? Speak again. Show yourself. Silas brings out his gun and a giant <laughs> long knife. <laughs> the boys and vo- their toys. We came to you for help. The voice Which responds slowly. Quick on the trigger there, aren't you? I can tell you why why you're here. here. Each of you has earned your place in the annals of history. You have diligently worked to rid the world of the scourge of monsters that for, for you and for that you shall be rewarded. But not until you complete one more test. It lies beyond those doors. If you can confront the faces of evil and survive, you shall find safety and power. If you perish, no, you shall be honored in death for your bravery. So if we complete this task, we will all be headed for the annals of history. But if we don't, we don't. If you die, you will be like many of the others. All you must do is leave. Well, you won't have to ask me twice, and I'll try to open the door again. (laughs) As you go to turn the knob on the door, you hear the strike of a match. And as you turn around, you see a match float into the air, lit, as if held by nothing. A cigarette rises into the air, also held by nothing. It is lit. It lights up the tip. And more smoke begins to spread throughout the room. Oh, that's a pretty neat trick. But Which I can see right that? through you, and by seeing right through you, I mean I see you, and I cast, <laughs> I cast see invisibility. You see <laughs> a very naked man. <laughs> I. This is exposure. <laughs> That's some no free wonder. exposure. That is, no, no wonder they didn't work for that. free exposure. <laughs> yeah, someone thinks exposure is a good thing, actually. Mm. He's quite thin, not very tall. Um, you know, relatively handsome. He's got a shock of, of thick gray hair. He sits down on the armchair and crosses his leg, leaning back. The rest of you just see this cigarette move through the air. Again, he takes another puff on it and spreads, you know, blows it throughout the air, throughout the room. You can smell the scent of it. Um, He sort of glances at each of you. I think maybe you did say that out loud. (laughs) He keeps his eyes sort of trained on you, Robin. Um, he He looks to you and goes, that is an interesting trick. It will serve you as you move forward. What is beyond those doors? are some of the most dangerous monsters that you can encounter. Dispatch them for me, and I shall let you leave. And you will join the annals of history, correct? You shall, and I will bestow upon you some of the greatest rewards I can offer. Now that, that's what I'm interested in. At first I thought this was just a veiled threat, but you're actually telling us you have some rewards. What rewards are you offering? Bravery yes. shall always be rewarded. Mm. Yes. But That's suspicious. I let you live as the reward sort of situation. He takes a puff, brings it over again. You watch this cigarette float unsupported through the air and get snuffed into a beautiful crystal uh, uh, ashtray off on one of the tables as he returns it. He then stands up and walks over to what has now appeared is a bookshelf. Uh, you see a book come off the shelf as he, 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 it floats through the air and he walks to the center of the room, beginning to open it and turn the pages by firelight. He says, yes, 
this is a list of wondrous boons, feats that will give you great powers. I know how to make these happen for you, but you must dispose of the monsters beyond that door before I will do this. You must dispose of some monsters? I've never disposed of anything in my life. I have heard differently, dear Feruza. I have heard you have disposed of many an evil threat over your time. You are a great hunter, as are the rest of you. Otherwise, you would not be here. Or maybe I've done a little disposing here and there. But how do you suppose we dispose of these monsters? Is that we to kill us? them? It's <laughs> not that difficult or complicated. I'm the with the squirrel. Let's do this. The book snaps shut. It floats through the air again. Gets placed on the bookshelf. Uh, Robin, you are the only one who can see this elegant naked man uh, walking around the room. <laughs> Um, he opens <laughs> one of the lower drawers, um, pulls out a pack of bandages, and places it on a table. He finds a hat on a coat rack in the corner, pulls it off, places it on his head. The rest of you just see a hat floating around. He picks up the bandages and begins to slowly wrap his hands down his arms begins to wrap the bandages around his head and neck. He wraps it down around the other arm and then grabs an overcoat, placing it on and do, you know, fastening up the buttons. Now, other than his missing legs and feet, there is a form in front of you. Okay. He says, perhaps this will make you feel more at ease. Who are you? My name is it's Claude. Bad. And, Claude, if we were to refuse your offer, say we were not interested in your games, what would happen? I'm not sure you have a choice, my dear. Ah, so it's that kind of threat I see. Well, I was never one to say no to a challenge, so it's a good thing that I'm okay with this. <laughs> Same. Or else I'm you would okay be the monster the I would be hunting. He walks over to the double doors, you see this overcoat and the bandages and the hat as it moves towards the door, just barely impressions over where the eyes and the mouth must be. Yeah. His hands touch the doorknobs. He looks back to you and says, are you ready? I, 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 as the walking was going on and yes. as Silas is you know fairly convinced that he knows where the front of this uh, individual is um, yes possibly mm -hmm. distracted um he has been looking the entire time on where he returned the book to the bookcase mm -hmm. and um silas is going to float it and try to you know essentially pocket it under <laughs> his coat before uh, we go through the store uh, fantastic. Um, he's going to do a perception check, and you're going to do a stealth or sleight of hand, sleight I of guess. Hand? Yeah, I'll let you do it. Yeah. Excellent. That is a 23. And Actually, yeah. no, that's not high enough. Oh my gosh, I forgot <laughs> I had that high in there. That is a uh, 27. Wow. Uh, well, you beat him, but actually not by a ton. I rolled very well. Um, so you are, you feel pretty confident that as you floated this across, you've timed it perfectly with the, his back being turned and get it pocketed just as he turns around to address you all. And then I just very gruffly forge it. All right, let's go squirrel. Carolyn. <laughs> Carolyn, Carolyn is way too long to say. Is there something shorter? I don't know, like three letters. No. I don't know, like <laughs> pear, Lynn. Like, I don't know. That's not it. You could use my last name, Stern. How about Stir. that? Is Stern. That... That's four letters. It's too many. You know what? Maybe by the time we're done with this, you'll be able to use all four letters. All right. It's your way, sir. Let's go. Okay. He turns back to the door, turns the handles, 
pulls them open. They swing wide. Beyond, you see a long hallway, uh, ornate soft rug along the ground. On the wall are candles, candelabras, sconces sticking out of the side at intervals. Um, it looks almost impossibly long, but at the far end is a door. He turns to you, says, after you, I will be waiting here. Those of you who live and have killed all that are beyond these doors may return for your reward. Good luck. We may return to this darkened hallway. Yeah. To this room. To this room. One last question. How many creatures are we dispatching? Mm. Disposing. Dispatching. <laughs> Both. Something. Slaying. S Enough. Oh, what is uh, give me a persuasion check. Sure. Yay. Good question. Yeah, that's only an eight. <laughs> he looks to see you and says, well, now that would be cheating. Hmm. Only if you've made the rules and determined that you can't tell us how many. Well, no. that's fine. You keep your mystery. All I'll say is that if we return before we're done, you don't get to be pissy about it. And I will walk out the double doors. <laughs> <laughs> you walk down the hallway. What would the rest of you like to do? Um, Walking after the, the squirrel. Okay. Um, I guess... I I mean, Bruce is looking at Robin and wondering if Robin's face looks just so horrified. She's just wondering who they're making a deal with because we couldn't read why Robin's face was like. So she just kind of he put a coat on and head toward the door. <laughs> we don't know what you're seeing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right, Feruza follows Silas yeah. and uh, Carolyn down the down the hallway. Maeve and Robin. He's going to turn and go, you know, it would just be so helpful if you could just give us a couple of tips. Persuasion, please. May I try and perform here a little bit? Oh. I think this is a little bit of like pouty red lips. Okay. Um, okay. Giving a little bit yeah. of, oh, I'm, I, I don't know what I'm doing here. I just... I may have the reputation as a monster hunter, but it's just been being in the right place at the right time. Okay, um, let's do this. Give me a performance check and we'll see how well you perform, which can give oh, you- Oh, nice. Okay. It's a 26. It's a 26. <laughs> All right. Um, you can't see his face or his expressions. Uh, Neither can Robin at this point because he's wrapped in bandages. Um, but there's a soft chuckle. And he reaches out and just with one finger sort of lifts one of the velvet ribbons on your neck, letting it fall back down. Um, he looks to you and he says, I'm sure you'll have no trouble. But because I like you, Remember this, they are never alone. Well, it's good to know. Thank you. Are you sharing secrets? Do and I'll head tell out. what the secrets are. You're gone though, right? Or are you there? Arusa yeah, left. Putting yeah. the F back around and asking <laughs> what the secrets are about. So Veruza takes about two steps down the hallway and then hears Maeve flirting with a, a bandaged a mummy. individual. Yeah. Um, and uh, I, I and... was trying to be a little sneaky about that. Okay. If that, if um, that matters. We can we can do a, a um, stealth perception contest Ooh. with that if you'd like. Go ahead okay. and give us a stealth Maeve versus Feruza's perception. Oh, yeah. I like, mean, Robin is also still standing there, but I give you. Some I know space. Robin was still there. <laughs> yes, okay. uh, that's a twenty-four. Okay, oh, forget it. <laughs> so Veruza like thinks she heard something, and she's yes. like, "No, it must just be me remembering the sound of the vacuum cleaner." And he keeps walking. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Maven, Robin. 
and Maeve winks at Claude mm-hmm. and then kind of lowers the hat, hikes up the coat, and heads out. Claude picks up a, a, a you know, on one of the other tables now you're just noticing a, a glass decanter filled with a warm amber liquid and a, and a um, pair of two glasses, crystal glasses. He looks to you, Maeve, and he says, I'll keep it warm for you and begins to pour two drinks on the table and takes off his overcoat and begins to unwrap his bandages, putting them neatly away back in the drawer as Robin looks on horrified. (laughs) I was just going to say, um, whatever boon you're talking about giving us, uh, hopefully I can also show you that you are in need of a vacuum cleaner. <laughs> we will get to that point later. <laughs> and she starts to head down. Okay. Robin heads down the hallway. <laughs> Maybe. Uh, you, he has now disappeared from sight. He has taken off his overcoat and hat as well as his bandages. He's no longer carrying anything. Um, so you are not sure where in the room this entity is. <clears throat> So Until like, suddenly, guys... by your ear, you hear, get moving, chickadee. Who hears Ed... it? Maeve. Oh. Oh, I, I left after. Oh, you did leave. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. Like, I was like, like she's still there. Oh, sorry. I'll, I'll keep moving faster. You're, <laughs> You're gone. Great. Uh, Robin <laughs> tries to sell him a vacuum cleaner and then <laughs> proceeds down the hallway. Um, as Robin, the last in line, steps into this hallway, the doors close without you seeing how uh, behind you with a firm as that happens uh, and you are walking down this long long hallway no doors on the side except at the far far end um, ne- or Carolyn and Silas leading the way um, as you get closer you do begin to hear the strains of music very dramatic organ music. Um, As you get closer, you begin to sense that it's maybe right beyond this wooden door. I'm gonna reach up and put my hand on the door. Mm -hmm. (laughs) And what I'm trying to determine is, is this somebody with a phonograph or is this a real organ? Because a real organ vibrates everything. Uh, Fantastic. Perception check, please. Okay. Oh, wow. Yeah, Carolyn is nowhere near as good as a lot of these things as <laughs> Neb is. Uh, 11. 11. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, maybe the stereo is just up really high because mm-hmm. you're having trouble determining between vibrations of an instrument or vibrations of a speaker of some kind. Um it's yeah it's not very clear uh but it is it is very full sound i'll turn so back you're to... hearing that right yeah i was trying to determine if that was uh real or just memorex let's just open the what? door and find out before we do yeah i don't know if you agree with me on this but if we've been brought here specifically to dispatch these creatures, I don't know if we have much of a chance at stealth. What do you think? I believe they're expecting us. Me too. And with that, I will. are these double doors again? They, it is a single door, but you notice a huge bolt at the top that's been, you know, completely pulled. So you're going to have to unbolt it to open the door. Bolt it I'll, from inside. I'll do that not caring how loud it is, and then just open the door confidently. (laughs) And open the door inwards. As you do, the hallway fills with the most intense gothic organ music that you have ever heard. As you step into the room beyond, it is almost a cavern this enormous space. There's even a a little river that seems to move through this room. Off in the corner, there is 
a huge organ embedded into the stone wall. The organ pipes going up at least 30, 40 feet into the air. Uh, they are bone white and just brimming vi with vibrations. Sitting at this organ hunched over is a black cloaked figure that plays furiously. Um, when you open the door and step in, it's almost as though if it didn't hear you. It is so absorbed in its music. Um, is how are is this a shadowy place? Are there places to kind of slip into the shadows here? There are places to slip into the shadows. There are torches that have been placed in sort of hangers along the walls. Um, and this little little windy sort of underground river seems to go off around a bend down further into the cavern out of sight. I would like to sort of step into the the, sh the place where the shadows are between the flickering torches. Give me a stealth check, please. Uh, 19. A 19. You hide with a 19. In the as, as Silas steps through, yes. um, he is going to whisper where no one else hears him except the creature ahead. Okay. And oh. he is going to say, are you a monster <laughs> great <laughs> and it can reply to me <laughs> there's a little hitch in the music and then it continues in your mind you hear depends upon your definition Silas is going to walk uh, not briskly slowly continue to walk forward closer mm -hmm. to but the wait. creature. Silas, wait. What if he is one of the creatures we're supposed to kill? Then I'm going to kill it. That's what we're here for. And <laughs> Silas continues to walk. Continues <laughs> to walk forward. Um, Silas, as you step closer, you suddenly freeze, hearing from around this back corner. I, I'm, I'm going to turn <laughs> and deal with the threat. As you turn in that direction, backlit by one of these flickering torches off in the corner is a hulking beast. It is humanoid in form, but it is covered in hair. Its snout elongated and long, sharp, snarling jaws as a wolf man begins to stalk forward towards you on its hind legs. As it does, the organist stops and turns. He says, down, Lon. Down, I say. The wolf man stops. <clears throat> Growling at you, Silas. The organist just sort of plays one last little sting on the organ and turns around. You see that his face is covered with a white mask across half of it. As he turns, he leans back on the stool. He looks at you, Silas. Are you here to dispose of me? Well, I've heard dispose, dispatch, slay, which is my personal favorite. But we're supposed to do it for rewards. Ah. Is this the part where you tell me where we have been deceived and that the true monster is in the room we just came from. I see you've met my friend Claude. Oh, what? Did this explain what you mean by met Claude? We assumed he was there because he it wrapped itself in tape. <laughs> That's as much as Miss Bucket. Why are you making that face again? <laughs> um, he snickers a little bit and stands up. He says. Claude has been trying to kill me for centuries. But Why? But you live in the same house. How is he not a chief? <laughs> He's bolted me in here. I don't think he can do the job by himself. So 
What would you give us to turn around and kill Claude? <laughs> oh, God, dear Silas, you're so fast to turn coat. Why don't we find out first why he wants you killed? And why can he I... won't do it himself. I don't think he can. He's not strong enough to take me on one-on-one. -on -one. So he brings me these lackeys. <gasps> but it's all right. I've disposed of dispatched of many of your kind before. And besides, I have my puppy Lon here to help me. Wait, 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 wait. Oh, why are you fighting in the first place? Maybe we can help <laughs> blow this all over. <laughs> we brought nuts. <laughs> you run nuts. Why don't you give me a persuasion check? Okay. Oh, that's my persuasion. Oh, that's one. Um... <laughs> 13. It's a 13. Oh. Um, again, he laughs a little. Um, <clears throat> bye. He's uh, certainly inviting older adventurers. Must have worked through all the young ones. <laughs> <laughs> well, dear. I don't know if that was rude or not. I'm just thinking <laughs> about it. Silas, you may kill him. <laughs> As soon as, as soon as Silas hears that, um, yes. he, he is going to, uh, you know, pull a gun and a long knife out and uh, and fire away at this Fantastic. Creature. Um, as we start initiative, please. <laughs> <laughs> um, and just, just to remind you, my sea invisibility is up for an hour. Yes, gotcha. Okay. Uh, as of this moment. Thank you. Okay, let's start with Feruza. Yes, I'm 16. 16 for Feruza. And Carolyn. These are my nuts. I brought them. You don't get to just offer them to anybody. And now I'm very oh. distracted. I rolled a zero. Because oh. <laughs> I rolled oh, a no, natural Carolyn. one and I have a negative one to my initiative. So I am... I've turned I'm, my back okay. on this organist to argue with Feruza about my nuts. I have a feeling I'm probably going to run into Jekyll and Hyde later, but I want Carol and Neb to be Jekyll and Hyde really badly now. I mean, just wait until I transform if I survive yeah. that long. All right, Robin. 24. Whoa! Whoa. All right. She's seen some things. <laughs> yeah. Me too. She got... She she got <laughs> Possibly negged, and now yeah. it totally worked. <laughs> so I and Maeve, twenty-seven. Ooh. What? What are these? Oh wait, sorry, uh, twenty-four. Okay. Still, what? Sorry, uh, you're probably slightly more spry than Robin. Yeah, you can go mm -hmm. first, Maeve. All right. So Silas, um, we'll let you get your initiating fires off. Um, before we go back to the top of the round, because you did kind of go for it. So go ahead. Yep. So um, Silas, uh, you actually see he does not raise his arms and the revolver flies out of its holster and yes. positions itself kind of at his right shoulder. And then um, the knife uh, also flips similarly. And he's just got his hands kind of down at his yes. sides, uh, palms uh, upturned. And then he's going to fire two uh, bullets out of the revolver. You see it like spins like super fast in order to like reload, um, you know, by itself seemingly. And then the knife is going to uh, go forward and also attack. Fantastic. Before you roll it, his eyes catch your one eye. Uh, as he does, he whispers. You hear a haunting strain in your mind. Please make a charisma saving throw. Ooh, that's good. I'm good at those. You are good at those. Uh, so that is a 26. 26. All right. <laughs> you resist the haunting melody in your mind. Please go ahead and roll your oh. attack. That one was a uh, an 18. An 18 will hit. All right, and the other one was higher than 18. 
And then I'm just going to do oh, all the oh, knife oh. attack as well, real quick. Um, so that's going to be um, that was a 17. Uh, that will also hit. Okay, so that is going to be the two uh, bullets are going to be um, that is a total of 18 force damage. Okay. And then the knife that springs ahead and flies toward that is going to be a total of um, oh yeah, 11 more. So 11 more force damage. All right. Fantastic. So yes, so the two bullets hit in his shoulder. The knife slashes across one arm. As it does, his head rears back. You see the whites of his eyes through this mask across his face. As Maeve, it jumps up to your turn. Uh, all right, I'm gonna go um, very sneakily the way I do. Uh, just sort of go in behind uh, this creature who really hasn't done anything to us, but I see it attacking. Ah. I'm going to bank on no one seeing me do this, to be honest. Because uh, I'm going to try and get back out of there, because that's what I do. Uh, I'm going to sneak in, I'm going to attack, um, and I'm going to play it like a... as if I take the hilt of a... Uh, as if I grabbed a letter opener off, it, off of a desk, but as I jab it at someone, it extends and... Shoo, shoo, and this is, uh, you're going to the organist. I'm going to the organist. The organist, okay. He seems to be the one calling the shot. Yes. Uh, so. Oh, nat 20. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> nice. Okay. So. Uh, it's gonna be so tough. out of nowhere, you dodge up behind him, shiv him in the side with a long leather <laughs> opener. Uh, and and this will just hold him in place as okay. well. Woo. Is that, is that? So it's going to be this twice, right? Yes. Um, Twenty nine points of damage. Twenty nine <laughs> points of damage. And sheathed in that energy in case he moves, and then I will dart back into the shadows All if right. I can and try and hide. Give me a hide check. Uh twenty four. Uh Not... twenty Come on, math. Twenty six, sorry. Alright, sounds good. Twenty six. Okay, Robin, you're up. Maeve appeared, shivved, shivved this organist, and then disappeared again. Oh, you're muted, Robin. <laughs> Look okay, delightful, uh, though. Yes, uh, all right. <laughs> well, I suppose we're doing this. And she's going to, like, pull <laughs> off the extension of the vacuum that's on her back. And yes. she's going to step forward. And oh my God. seeing that the organist is being dealt with, she's going to turn her attention to the dog, or the wolf man. Yes. And uh, she's going to say... Um, you want to see how many fleas this this thing has sucked up in the past? And she's going to change what? from suck to blow. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and she's going to release an infestation of fleas. I didn't oh, know you God. were the Mega Maid. This is amazing. <laughs> Suck that And Ma oh. Maeve's singing, I played that game. <laughs> You're going to get one of Parties? those. Uh, uh, so it needs to make a concert. party in the valley. I don't know. Party in the valley. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Valley. I wouldn't even come anywhere. Mm. Um, so yes, con con save, con saving throw. Okay. As okay. as you are making that save, yes. Uh, Carolyn is going to finally pull herself away from arguing with Feruza. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> what? what? Sorry, Dormant. I was going to use... Because I, was I actually my... have a good con saving throw. But it's a one. Oh, Sorry, well, I... go ahead, Carolyn. No, no, it's funny because I was going to... I rolled for it and I've got whoa as my yeah. cosmic omen. Whoa. So I was going to use it, but I feel like... Because I, I have to use it before I know what you're Right, right, right. Hey, I, I jumped you. That's my that's my bad. So uh, 
I think I'm going to use it anyway, just for funsies, um, because I had to do a negative on something. So why yes. not make these creatures? Uh, yes. So uh, Carolyn is going to call out and say, ah, so many magey mutts. I'm very familiar with that. Yeah, you could use a cleaning. Uh, and you need to roll a d6 and subtract whatever you rolled from whatever your total is. From, oh, what I, the one that I rolled? <laughs> yes. Fantastic. That's a six on a d6. Oh. So what's that con oh. saving throw now? I feel like a negative the NPC five? Universal is mad at me here. Um, okay, so I, the, it, I mean, yes, it is a one minus six plus my con saving throw. I think Robin's fine. <laughs> Go ahead. <laughs> um, so uh, you just see these mites, these dust mites, and these fleas coming out of the vacuum. And uh, it's swirling around and infest infesting this wolf man oh for God. nine points of poison damage. Nine poison damage. Yeah. And mm -hmm. on top of that, I have to roll a d4 to determine ah. these mites go underneath their feet and move them uh, yes. randomly. Five, oh, yay, you like, like a bug's bunny cartoon. Yeah, five feet <laughs> in uh west. That's what it says. <laughs> five feet west. <laughs> yeah, All right, find out if it happens. Uh, it just mm. happens. It just happens. Yeah. So, so the mites crawl under <laughs> the wolf man's feet <laughs> and crawl in over. <laughs> oh <my God>. Disgusting. <laughs> you yeah, in the sound stage, Universal. <laughs> I, mean, oh I love really it. An opportunity there. Um, <laughs> I mean, maybe that happened to me. I don't remember. Um, but yes, yeah, so he just shifts over, all while kind of dancing a little bit. Um, what are you doing? He himself and brings his hind foot up to kind of scratch the mites uh, up on his, his chin there. Uh, and he's moved oh five feet over to the west. Um, fantastic, Robin. Anything else? Uh, that will be it. That will do. All right, Silas, you get another go after your surprise. And uh, again, you just see that it um, um, it reloads and, and spins like super, super fast yeah. and they're gonna fire mm -hmm. two more times. And then okay. the blade uh, kind of swings around, is spinning slightly and then going to attack again. Mm -hmm. So uh, 16. Um, to hit, miss, uh, yeah, hits. To hit, yeah. Okay, and then, yep. um, yeah, much higher than 16. Um, and then uh, 15. Is oh, 15 no. He's just a man. Yeah. With a beautiful voice. We're all just innocent and a men. Great um, musician. Yeah. So, um, did, did that uh, 15 hit as well? Uh, 15 does not hit, no. Okay, got it. So, that will be. Um, that is 19 points of force damage with the nice uh, educational bolts. set of rolls there for you. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so 19 on that one. Uh, uh, 19, uh, 19. Yes. 19. Okay. 19 on that. All right. Let's see. And then Silas, uh, you actually see uh, that Silas uh, lifts up oh off God. the ground and hovers um, up about uh, you know 15 feet. Right. So as that's happening and your bullets and Maeve's shiv and your slice, all of these things, before he can even respond, poof, 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 <gasps> he falls back onto the organ. It plays a discordant note. As the organ shot, you know, just explodes with sound throughout the space. It all begins to shake. Some stones begin to fall from the ceiling. And as they do, the wolf man in the corner growls. No owner or, you know, master in this moment to hold it back any longer. We're at a point of no return. For Ruza, you get one, oh, unless you weren't done, uh, Silas. No, that's mm -hmm. that's it. For Ruza, you get one action in before it takes its turn. Oh, I get one action in before. Well, no, you it? get your turn. Sorry, you get. Sorry, your turn. Sorry, I, like... sorry I, want, I want to make sure in the dramatic <laughs> yes. storytelling. Here, yes. Um, are we to at least, uh, as the viewer of this yes. movie, believe yes. that the organist is dead? Yes. Okay. okay. Yeah. You are meant to believe, believe that. Yes. 
<laughs> he appears to be. As he does, you can then see the a very, cloak disappears very and there's thick. just the mask left. Yeah. <laughs> he, he is now the true angel of music. You got it. He, his body seems That's what like he a... gets for making us sing high E flats, though. <laughs> yeah, he's such it's a like prima donna. Mist. I mean, jeez. Yeah. It's a slight mist that sort of arises from the cloak as it flattens down to just a cape and a white mask. He didn't even get to rip his mask off. Come on. Oh, horrifying. <laughs> Too powerful. <laughs> See, now right. I'm wishing he was somehow here again. Oh, <laughs> Marisa, I love turn. you so much, Lauren. <laughs> okay. But next, you have to do all of the Yestin songs as well. Yes. Oh, no. Yeah. <laughs> the Yestin ones. I like the Yestin. Amazing. Ones. So good. <laughs> it's the last little <laughs> set of notes. Oh, we're getting all right. kinds of nerdy up in here. So much I know. Nerdy. <laughs> That's the best thing about it. This might be my favorite episode yet, friends. Oh, <laughs> Okay, go ahead, Faruza. We're not going to get um, through any of this. I have so we're much not. fun. We're not. We're only one room. I know. That was a cleaner. That's great. It. You've it's met three different. monsters. That's great. You've met three monsters. <laughs> I'm very happy. Go ahead, Faruza. <laughs> okay. Bruza is was actually quite disgusted and she's sort of munching on some nuts in her mouth. Yes. And she was trying to play the organ before you guys blew it up. So she was actually like playing the organ. Well, like, the organ's as you still guys... there. The organ's there. Oh, it's it just is? that he fell on it. Um, oh. and then, and then <laughs> push him turned to push them off. So yeah, you can just push the mask mm -hmm. and the uh, the cape away, and you are welcome to yeah. try to play the organ if you would like. Yes. And as you guys were like fighting, she was playing this like really like discordant <gasps> tune at like to your fight because she was trying to be really dramatic with it, and like at the same time she's like brushing bugs off the keys and stuff as she's fighting like a oh, crap, but she's, like, but she's playing along with it. And when she sees the wolf stand up, she stands up slowly. And she's like, were you talking to us? I didn't think you said anything, but I think you're about to talk to us. <laughs> would you like to make an attack or anything other than that? Or are you trying, yes. or would you like to do an animal handling or oh, a animal. persuasion? No. Or... no, I think I want to smack him. Someone you're going to smack so... him. Yeah, so she as she she's rolls up a newspaper and <laughs> get get on get. <laughs> you are a bad dog, bad, <laughs> bad dog <laughs> man, bad wolf. Be snacks for you. Scooby <laughs> <laughs> Doo Doo. <laughs> Those meddling kids are hurting. <laughs> Who are you? Are meddling kids? These are just some bad guys trying to get away with being bad guys. Damn you. <laughs> and she stands up like trying to look really dramatic. She brushes oh, the You off do. The You're shoulder. framed by the by the organ behind you. Uh, you know, them all shooting out as if it was like an extension of your energy or your hair. Uh perfectly framed. Again, just your eyes lit up bright uh in this this dark cabin as the as the, the firelight flickers behind you. Were you growling at us? And as she's saying this with the illuminated organ, she's somewhat levitating off the ground Whoa. and she's moving forward, but her toes are scraping on the yes. ground. <laughs> her very long yeah. pointed uh, yeah. cockroach in Pointy. the corner kind of shoes. Yeah. 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 And there, so if you look at her feet, you guys just see her, her toes and dragging. And you hear that. Look at the front. She's like, as it scrapes along the rock and the ground. And she's moving toward him. And she's yes. like, that's what I thought. You can put it in your pipe and smoke it. And she's going to hit him twice because the pipe is still in her hand. Yes. Hit him once with the pipe. The pipe and of justice. The pipe. Exactly. The pipe All right, of pipe justice. of justice. Yes. So I already did two hits. One was 22 and one was 10, <laughs> even with the advantage because I was reckless and raging. So I think the first one hits and the first second one First will hit, right. second will not. Yes. Okay. So I still get plus two, plus two. And that is a, that's 13 points of damage. Woo. All right. Woof, exactly. Woof. Woof. <laughs> Woof, for sure. Um, so yeah, you you float forward, your toes scraping along the ground, and just <laughs> you know, one hit across yeah. backhanded with your pipe hit. <laughs> then coming back, um, you know, he he's able to dodge it and move back, and he grip, you know, grabs you again. <sighs> and you start to see spittle dribble from his 
his uh, his lips, his his teeth, as uh, as what do you call it? drool falls down. Anything else, Faruza? Absolutely not. And she yanks the chew toy out of his mouth. <laughs> there was suddenly, oddly, a chew toy uh, <laughs> of a bone in his mouth that Faruza yanks out of there. Boy, dreams are weird, aren't they? Mm -hmm. um, yeah, that's really weird. Mm -hmm. It is now its turn. It sees you there, right in front of her, front of it, Feruza, taunting it. Uh, you've just smacked it across the nose <laughs> with your your smoking pipe. Um, it lunges forward, its jaws extending. Uh. You see the very human eyes in its skull as its hands rake down. It tries to bite you as well as rake its claws across you. The first one is a natural 20 on the oh. bite. Thank you very much. Ooh, the no! No! The claws are a dirty 20 to hit you. How All right, what kind of damage is it? <laughs> it's going to be piercing and slashing. So you'll take your okay. resistance. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, yep. So let's go ahead and do that damage before mm -hmm. I make things worse for you. Ah! Cackles. <laughs> 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 um, there we go. All right. So from the bite, you're mm -hmm. gonna take eleven piercing damage, and please make a Constitution saving throw. Oh. <laughs> oh wait. Oh, this is this could be good or could be very bad. We'll see. It is an eighteen. <gasps> can't see. You can't scare a witch when a witch can slow witch As witch. it leaps on you, raking its claws across and bites into your shoulder, you feel ah. some of the spittle and drool enter into your bloodstream, but you swipe it away, luckily keeping it from uh, uh, doing any damage. Um, next, the claws. Oh, but that was, I'm sorry, that was a natural 20. So you're actually going to take... Both were natural 20s? No, 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 the first one. You're going to oh, take okay. an additional... <laughs> Eight. That's payback for me. <laughs> <laughs> On that first okay. one. Um, the claws okay. are going to do nine slashing damage, and you're going to okay. make strength sa a strength saving throw this time. Oh, 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 oh. Come on, come on, come on. 14. A 14. It yeah. knocks you to the ground. You are now <gasps> thrown. It has oh, advantage no. on you as it now takes a maul and tries to bite and claw at you again. No. Now with advantage. All right, I have a 24 on the bite. Oh my god. And I have a 23 on the claw. <laughs> oh. No. The bite. <laughs> 10 more points. The claws. Ooh. Which one? Which 16 one? more damage. No. Um, I'm going to need you to make another constitution, constitution. saving throw. Saving throw. It was the it, it was all the dog puns, the Scooby Doo puns, wasn't it? <laughs> That's what it was. I should have left it alone. Wait, nineteen. A nineteen. Uh, oh boy! <laughs> Yet again, you feel the drool trying to enter your bloodstream, but you're able. To I'm ready now. Uh, that is the end of its turn at the moment. As it just. You all watch as this thing pounces up Thanks about for watching. 10 feet in the air, <laughs> shove Feruza onto the ground and just <laughs> bite and scratch at every inch of her. She is just absolutely mauled by this creature. It's the spikes of the hair on its back silhouetted in the flickering uh, torch light behind. Uh, Carolyn, what? down at the bottom of the initiative, what would you yeah. like to do? So she manages to not really react to any of the mauling that's going on. And, <laughs> and Stone-Faced says, oh, puppy, you're adorable. I have a friend you should meet. Maximilian! And from behind her, <laughs> no! out of nowhere, a small uh, black, wolf with gleaming red eyes and long fangs comes growling out from around her Ooh. um and as it leaps to attack the wolf man uh carolyn's gonna also say oh i guess you'll need a little bit of help 
and she's going to walk forward and all of a sudden her form is also going to elongate a little bit Ooh. and suddenly there's lightning from behind her. You don't know exactly why, but it frames her and it's almost as though she has also kind of taken a, a wolf-ish form, but mm. it's more black and purple. Ooh. And as she finally takes a, a, a nut out of her pocket and is gonna sling it at the thing. <laughs> so <laughs> Max is gonna attack, does a 16 hit. A 16 yeah. misses. A 16, oh. okay. So Max, Max misses. Max misses. Um, and then for the- I just ima I'm imagining Max as we know him, but like someone got in there with some hair gel and like spiked him up a little bit. Oh, like, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. He's, 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 he's trying to look fearsome. Yeah, like, it's his ah! Halloween costume. Yeah. Gave yeah. him some like, you know, tips, some yeah. cool guy tips. Mm -hmm. he's, he's got contacts in, even though you know, yeah. contacts yeah. and a wolf, that is so oh, hard yeah. to do. Um, and that's why he missed, really. It's the kind Really? Of, um, so distracting. The <laughs> the nut that I slung uh, yes. does a seventeen hit. What a seventeen hit. nuts! It hits. It hits a seventeen. Okay, hit. Uh, as she throws it, it's the dog uh, missed, but the nut. <laughs> you know, sometimes Maximilian has got to be the distraction. There you uh, go. It elongates into this shooting star that hits the creature for nine radiant damage nine radiant damage and she she just seems to pull another one out of her pocket and say i can do this all day or are you going to finally heal <gasps> this these are salty nuts oh my <laughs> are very salty nuts. All right, Maeve, we're back up to you. You're hidden back in the shadows, having dispatched of the organist, uh, helped dispatch of the organist. What would you like to do? All right, I'm going to go ahead and do the same thing again. But now that there's a puppy attacking, uh, it seems to be a bit distracted, mm. which is just how I like it. Mm. Uh, <laughs> I mean, you know, if, when they're distracted, mm. that's the best time to get in there. It's what it happened is. to my third husband. <laughs> he just got a bit distracted. Uh, so that's a 17. A 17 will hit. Okay. Um, uh, Seven points. Oh, seven plus. Uh, uh, it's eleven, and I forgot <laughs> to add eight last time. I just realized. Oh, but okay. You want to? That was my my well, last time was the other guy. So was oh yeah yeah okay he he did it didn't he matter. didn't make yeah. it he didn't get to right. do any of the cool stuff he can do so congratulations. <laughs> All right. So great. Yes. So you appear again out of nowhere next. Take a little wink at the puppy dog over there as he helps and distract. It's just a, yeah. a bit like the, the starlight and the just and then back into the shadows. Back into hiding. Go ahead and I'll give me a hide. Uh, 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 24. 24. Hiding. Okay, great. Is that all, me? That is it. She's just a flash of red hair and then she disappears. <laughs> red lips too. And red lips. Flash of red hair and a fedora. flash. <laughs> but oddly, everything feels a little sepia, a little grayed out anyways. So you can tell it's red hair, but you're not quite sure how you know. <laughs> uh, fantastic. Robin, your turn. Uh, Robin sees this, this uh, creature attacking Feruza and just be like, well, let me show you another feature on this vacuum. <laughs> and she changes it back from, from, from blow back to suck. <laughs> and she, blow turns suck. On, she turns on uh, uh, turbo. <laughs> and All right. she points Sorry, no, what Robin's really selling here. Okay. <laughs> Spaceballs, apparently. <laughs> and she, uh, she, she changes it to flamethrower. And she's going to firebolt this I'm thing. buying one of those. Oh Children of Erte, the t-shirt. Children yeah, of Erte, the book. Children oh of Erte, God. the flamethrower. <laughs> I gotta say, actually, I think, Carolyn, I think you're the one who's hurling space balls, if we're really <laughs> thinking about I mean, it. Yeah. You're not wrong. <laughs> These are balls of space. Mm -hmm. All right, Robin. Um, plus six. That's a 21 to hit. It'll hit, absolutely. Okay. 
So that'll be, um, oh, come on, be good, be good, be good. Okay, not bad. Uh, 13 fire damage. Is 13 just, fire. Is this flamethrower mm. axe. <laughs> I love it. All right. <laughs> the old lady holds the flamethrower as just flames burst out. It lights everything up in the chamber, flickering. You hear the... <laughs> squeal of this this wolf creature as it burns and you smell the 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 singeing uh hair burning dog hair uh as it burns in front of you anything else robin um i don't know how close i was to them uh but uh because I, I had a range of 30 feet but uh -huh. if i'm not within exact melee range i'm gonna use my movement to move to the back of the room where that door is Okay. Yeah, you're not in melee range okay. to the point of an op attack, so yes, you can move back towards the door, no problem. Okay. All right, Silas. Uh, Silas is uh, floating a little bit. Uh, the knife is going to move from uh, the uh, dispatched, or whatever yes. the word we're using here, um, over <laughs> to the, the wolfman, um, and that is going to be a uh, an 18 to hit. An 18 will hit. All right, and that's the bonus action that's going to do 11 points of force okay. damage. Um, but mm. then um, Silas is going to whip his head back and forth, and as he does, <laughs> like, um, a as he does this, you see this kind of pinkish purple energy like emerge back, and then when he whips his head, uh -huh. it's like it's uh, from a third eye right here, and it's a literal like whip that uh, yeah. lashes out at the creature. Mm. Intelligence saving throw. Intelligence saving throw. Oh, that is another one. Oh, Ooh, nice. Wow. So Ooh. I get like double damage. No, I'm just joking. No. Um, all right. So uh, 15, yeah. 15, no. 15, okay. points, no. of, 15 <laughs> points of psychic damage. <laughs> but, yeah. then, but then on that, uh, on, let's see, uh, it can't take reactions okay. until the end of its next turn. Okay. And then on its next turn, it must choose whether it gets a move, an action, or a bonus action. It only gets one of the three. Okay. Jeez. Got it. All right. Thank you, Silas. Anything else? <laughs> that is it. All right, Feruza, you're on the ground. There is an enormous hairy wolf creature stooped over you. You've lost blood. You felt your flesh torn off of the bone. Uh, everything's a little, to the rest of you, a little hazy, a little blurry, almost as if we don't really want to see the terrible violence of what is occurring in this moment. <laughs> Are you um, not entertained? It is just <laughs> perfectly lit so that it, it can escape a, a, a terrible rating in the theaters. Um, <laughs> yeah. Marissa, what would you like to do? She looks up at him and says, I'm prone bone breath. Stop drooling on me. <laughs> what, am I, what am I supposed to do? I'm prone. I'm supposed to get up, right? I mean, don't I have like, I don't know. Because part of it's a, is that a, is that a part of an action to get up or is it a whole action to get up? We don't know. It, half, it's half, your, it's half your movement to stand up, yes. Ah, got it. All right, so as she says that, she's going to stand up. and But she makes sure that as she stands up, is it... What kind of flooring is it? We don't really know. Do it's we? rock. This is a cavern of rock. So it's just dusty, hard, jagged rock floor. Okay, as she stands up, mm -hmm. she takes her hat off and runs her hands through her hair, which is extremely staticky, and slaps her, ha her hat back on her face and her head, like, sort of indignantly. And she's going to put her hand forward and all the static from her hair is going to zap him. Yes. Nobody messes with me, pal. <laughs> Let me see. This is, okay, no, wait. Time off. This is it. Let's see if I get, oh, wow. <gasps> 26 is the first hit. It hits. Um, as, as the electricity begins to move through this creature, it throws its head back. Ow! Oh, as God. it howls. Go ahead and give me your damage, or your, you know, yeah, your damage. No one told you you could bay at the moon. All right, let me see. It's adorable. It's like four, four, five, four, six, nine points of damage. Nine points one. of damage. Oh, no, wait, more than that. 
eight, oh. nine, ten. Oh no! Wait, wait. I can add my. No, I can only add my. No, only only ten. Only ten. Only ten. Yeah. Okay, so one more. Yeah, I okay. can add my shock, but I didn't throw anything, so I can't add my shock. All right, and then one more, and so she goes like this. Mm -hmm. so you, you stood up, almost kind of pushing it back off of you, and just one hand forward, and the other hand forward, just zapping it. Go ahead. She's like, I have more where that came from. At this point, her hair is like You're... static electricity, like standing out like this. Yes. <laughs> oh my God. Yes, the shot of you <laughs> is just all like eyes and hair. <sighs> yeah. Your, your skeleton sort of appears momentarily. Uh, you'll mm -hmm. notice that in your beautiful, you know, silver gray locks, there's a little almost <laughs> lightning yes. uh, shaped jagged yeah. black line moving through your hair yes uh, exactly please give yeah, exactly. me your one attack more. roll yeah this one oh i get advantage though so hold on oh no that was just a nine for some reason i can't hit that second time you can't hit that second. you're just too you're just you spent too much of your juice on the first one Getting um yeah, that's you it. missed on the second one so yeah. as this one as he throws his head back to bay at the the moon wherever it is your other hand just misses and you're unable to make contact um Damn. is that all for ruza i can't move because it gets an op attack right it would yes actually damn oh Sorry, it has no reaction i wrote that down it would not ah, get an op attack she's doing this. mechanically it would not get an op attack as she does this, yes. I mean we're talking the pointy toad but the moonwalk version backwards, like <laughs> and then electricity is coming out of her. So she's gonna move back from him a bit so she can like you so she can use her healing thing that is called Stone's Endurance to heal yes. for so you're one D twelve plus three. And you're just <laughs> vibrating with energy and electricity as you slowly take steps back away from the creature. Mm -hmm. That uh, is howling in front of you. It it's it's hair standing on end from the electricity, um, mm -hmm. as it cannot reach out uh, to swipe at you as you move away. It is Rock not its turn. It can take no reaction. It has to choose between a move and action, <laughs> and it's just a dog. This poor wolf. Um, well, Ned, you said <laughs> what? <laughs> It, no. wow. Okay. If it moves, it will take. And if it moves, it'll take. It well, no, you got... put, you put, I, oh, yeah, right, because you did the new thing. I, yep. Yep, okay. Okay, it is. I will say, yes. Max is right there. Max is right there? Yes, yeah. that's right, Max as well. Um. So Max would get an op attack as well if it moved. All right. Oh, this is more like if. If the wolf wanted to attack Max, oh, I wasn't sure. It, it knew, yeah, yeah. I gotcha. I gotcha. Also, it would take an alp attack, but m more importantly, I'm trying to be fair about this. Gotcha. Gotcha. Okay. Um. Oh, that might be fun. But no, I think I can make this happen. Great. Um. It is going to move. So, okay. Max, if you would like a little op attack, go ahead sure. and take it. Maximilian will. Uh, and no one else is next to the wolf man no, at this, at this point. point everybody has moved away that's only an 11 then so jaws uh, so snap just out just of reach. misses as it as it gets you know low to the ground and <laughs> stalks forward toward you Feruza. um it's the most interested in you uh it makes its way because i think it's probably got yeah it's got more speed than probably you do so it makes its mm -hmm. way it gets close enough to you now uh understanding that it cannot now take an action or a bonus action it oh. however <gasps> takes an action if uh it's it's going to take oh, yeah. seven points from me and i'm gonna flavor it this time that the, there are just two bright flashes of lightning it's a ch -ch of ch -ch. so as it stalks here, forward it, you know has a little <laughs> as it walks forward from the lightning of that um as it makes its way to for to towards you Feruza, it's going to yes. use one of its special things to attack anyways <laughs> as a separate action not involved okay. in this particular uh turn order and here it goes 
Yes, while go ahead. It, as it does, both Maximilian and Carolyn will suddenly join in the howling, but like intently louder Ooh. and more distracting as I'm going to once again use a, a woe and it has to okay. uh, roll a d6 and just detract from whatever a rolls. d6 and detract. <laughs> mm -hmm. All right, I rolled a four. All right, it's got advantage on you, Fruza, because you are a bloody freaking mess. Um, That's right. You look incredible, <laughs> but you also smell incredible to this thing. So it starts to go insane with bloodlust for you. It's going to make uh, first its bite attack. Ooh, those are very low rolls. It's going to miss on its bite. Its claws. It's also going to miss on its claws. Are you kidding me? Well, 16 I am won't kidding hit you, you right? A 16 won't hit you. No. That's the highest I got. Good lord. All right. Whoa. And I spent a legendary thing. All right. Fantastic. That's its <laughs> turn. <laughs> it is now next to you, Feruza, having done nothing as it came forward and tried to bite you and tried to swipe at you, even with its bloodlust energy wanting to take you down you were just too focused and energized again the sort of sneer across your brow lit by the light in your eyes the close-up of it as it can see as you easily dodge right and left it's uh it's threatening attacks all right carolyn she continues to howling yeah, the howl continues. And once again, it's almost as though, like, maybe she is also one of these monsters. You're not quite sure. But as she stops howling, uh, both of her hands light up, one uh, with a bright white light and one with some fire. As, as an action, I'm going to sling some fire. And as a bonus action, I'm going to sling another arrow. Uh, I don't think a 15 hits on the fire. A 15 will not hit, no. But does an 18 hit? An 18 will hit, yes. All right, so the arrow will sink in, and it'll actually look like one of those big, uh, like almost a javelin the size of this arrow, like something <laughs> you would use to take down an elephant. Yes. Uh, and it's six radiant damage. All right. And then uh, Carolyn will stop howling to whistle so that Maximilian can take a jump at this thing okay, and great. well this time uh i think 23 to hit will sink a maw yes in, uh for 12 piercing damage ow, as... ow, 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 ow. says the wolf man mm. um, <laughs> you were as... given a chance to heal and now you're just going to become a rug <laughs> There is a bite and a snide remark, uh, and the fight continues. Anything else, Carolyn? That's it. That's All right, May, we're back up to you hiding at 24. Uh, how how other lightning has done its duty? Yes, go for it. How uh, how, how bad of shape is it? It was bad. It was really bad. Um, yeah, he's he's definitely hurting. He's cowering. You can see the desperation in its attacks. I'm going to... Uh, pull out my uh what look like two silver bullets <laughs> and i'm gonna <laughs> add it specifically silver it, it's specifically well it's my no but it's i i am flavoring it to look like silver bullets because of what we are fighting for funsies yeah. but no it's it's not a, it's not it's actually not unless in, in the logic of a dream i can <laughs> turn it into that I had the thought and I'm so very nice, and probably anything would kill it. Yes, go ahead. Okay. First one won't hit. Actually, uh, 17? 17 will hit. Oh, okay, sweet. Um, and second one is an 18. Those will both hit. Sweet. Silver, silver bullets away. Let's do this. 11 and, oh, both, both 11s. Both 11s. So those are two 22s. <laughs> which are 44 points of damage. Pew, pew, pew. Oh my God. Uh, as these bullets hit this creature, it rears up on its hind legs and in the silhouette behind you, you just see the 
as it howls at the ceiling and its whole body, you watch its clawed hands transform back into a man's hands. You watch the snout come back into a man's face as its body shrinks and he falls into a, cr cl a clump on the floor. Another. Like I say, it's very similar to what happened to my third husband. <laughs> another naked man lies on the Another? Floor. There's another no one somewhere. Where's the first one? Where's the first one? Yeah. That first one? Yeah. <laughs> There's another one. Like, another one. <laughs> a naked man, the first for many of you. The second for <laughs> For what? whatever reason, Wait, because yourself. of ratings, it's they've just yes. happened to have died face down with it's like perfect... in the fetal position yep. and they're shooting up past the leg. Yep. Yes, so that is this way. You just see the crest of kind of a hip. Uh, <laughs> the shadow is uh, right across the, the, the butt. And <laughs> as this is happening though, Silas is like rushing forward, flies down and rushes forward. No, what what have we done? Do you know anything about that silver? Uh, room on that was on the train. Like, were, were you trapped in it? And and then Silas is like, I want to be a werewolf. What am I doing? And he's like putting his arm into his mouth and like moving <laughs> his his thing to try to get him to bite him. Uh, so will, his little human, uh, his little human <laughs> mouth yeah. now does absolutely nothing uh, to your skin. Carolyn oh. walks up next to Silas, looks down in disdain at this thing, and says. You wouldn't want to be bitten by him. That's the runt of the litter. Oh, I was gonna walk Carolyn. away. Dream her fighting words. <laughs> and then Silas just kind of says, uh, you know, uh, under his breath, he's like, "Sometimes I think you're just a naive little baker. But other times I think you've got ice water in your veins." <laughs> <laughs> All right. right. In the flickering candlelight of this cavern, uh, the organist me has the yes, the original organist <laughs> has okay. um, has phantomed out of existence. The wolf man creature has returned to his human shape in death. Um, from this place, there is the door leading back. Um, as well as this little river that seems to navigate down these caverns and around the corner. Was it Maeve that got the last hit on, on the phantom? Uh, mm -hmm. Yes, it was. Yeah, uh, Carolyn will walk up and grab the mask, the half mask that's left and kind of eye it for a second and then look back at you, Maeve, and toss it to you and say, that was very sneaky. Why, thanks. And I it. <laughs> <laughs> Did you catch it when she threw it? Did it hit you? Oh, yeah. Oh yeah, I, okay. I had no doubt about that. And 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 there's a, like a moment of like a, a nod of appraisal and of a respect and of mm. nod right back. And the click the click of heels as I yes. head down the, toward the river. No click of so. heels from me, but Maximilian immediately heals at my side, and the click of his claws. <laughs> <laughs> so Maeve and Carolyn are are uh, leading the way down the hall, down the cavern with the uh, water. Uh, are the rest of you following? Silas's heels float yes. up off the ground a little bit, and no sound <laughs> at all is heard. He no. floats through the air after them. Yeah it's it's shot from about the knees up so we can't tell exactly how it's happening <laughs> uh, robin and Feruza, how do you make your way down the hall down the cavern um Feruza's floating the same way with his toes <laughs> scraping on the ground <laughs> yeah they're really pointy to viewers it looks exactly the same it looks the same <laughs> Robin, uh, you don't hear any clicking from her squeaky rain boots, but you do hear the clicking of all the different components of this vacuum cleaner <laughs> as she clicks it back into place. You keep it down back there. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> all right, Maeve leads the way. Maeve, you come to a landing where an ornate boat sits in the water a lantern attached to one of the back uh posts as it hangs there illuminating this one sort of dark area you see that there's no longer any space to walk on dry land at either side if you wish to continue down this tunnel 
you will have to take. Go by sea. Go by sea. By water. By, I don't know, by boat. <laughs> Oops. By boat. For me. I don't don't know ruin if this the is mood. The right direction. I'm a little more of a land thief. Thank you. Thank you. We were all waiting for it, and I love you for it. <laughs> Not a boat, a boat thief? <laughs> Yeah, I'm I'm hopping. Hopping in. All right, with a with a graceful glide, you jump in, you find the rope that you can detach. There is room for all five of you and Max if you would all like to join. Um I know Silas, you don't have to if you don't want to. I'm going to I'm going to really? float above the the boat. Okay. All right, you're going to float. I'm going to walk alongside the boat if I can keep up. If I can yes. keep up, I'm going to grab on to, you know, one of the ropes. Uh boats gotcha. have ropes, I think. So I'm yeah, they have ropes, and there's these posts at, at the front and back of this boat um, yes. that are easy to grab. Um, so yes, the rest of you can jump in the boat as you do. Maeve unwraps the rope, kicks off, and the boat takes off, just the current bringing it down the river. Lots of years of yachting with my fourth husband. <laughs> <laughs> um, as it opens up... Shame what up. happened to him, though. <laughs> You know, when we're done with this, I'd be very interested in hearing about what happened to all of your husbands. Maybe over a drink or two. Yay! I feel like a lot of heads have rolled. <laughs> yeah. It opens up into a large lake, sort of within this cavern. Um, and you can see at the far reaches of this lake what appear to be almost jungle-like um, trees. But even as you kind of float closer to them, you can see that on the wall behind these trees is a painted backdrop to make it look like jungle that goes on forever. But really, it's just a pool in a very large warehouse kind of space uh, with some trees just along the edges. Um, as you float out into the center of this space, the boat rocks a little. And you look down into the inky black water. What is funny, Maeve? <laughs> no, that that was just Jen being a geek. Oh. <laughs> this this feels like like seeing all of my favorite no. <laughs> everything. I'm okay. so happy right okay. now. <laughs> Yay. Like, I cease to see what is so funny about the fact that I'm on the small <laughs> boat in the middle of okay. <laughs> I got I'm going to lean over and mm -hmm. uh, with my keen vision, try to pick out what is rocking the boat. Fantastic. Give me a perception check, please. I fly up as high as I can. Without you can, you, you can you probably get around 30 feet. It's quite a, quite a high. Uh... You, you know, when I'm not distracted by uh, everything, I actually roll really well. 25. A 25. Nice. nice. Um, the water is very, very dark, um, very hard to see through, but you can pick up shadows and there is a dark shadow swimming about 10 feet, you think, beneath this boat. It almost sort of disappears underneath the boat and you lean over, sort of rocking the whole thing to the side as you look to see it move, be move beyond the other side. Um, it swims, uh, pulling its arms forward in sort of a breaststroke and then goes into almost what looks like a lazy backstroke under the water. Does it look like it's seen or regarded us at all and is and it's just having some fun or has it not noticed us yet um you're pretty sure it's noticed you it's certainly you know it's it's circling this area it hasn't come up closer to the surface but it is sort of seems to be drawn to the boat so what do we think our next quarry is under us do we all see this this thing backstroking? I would point it out. I would oh, okay. I'll, I'll lazily not. point uh, in that direction. Say this, say. Though, the rest of you can't see it. Neb oh. is the only one with her role who can actually make out this shadow. It is the contrast is so minimal that you know she she tells you that there's something there, but you're kind of just gonna have to take her word for it, unless you want to make your own checks. So you say you see something doing the backstroke in the water. Yeah. 
fairly nicely. I think it knows we're here, but that doesn't necessarily mean it's not going to attack us. Should we, we attempt think? to communicate with it, or should we attack without warning? What do you I'm think? I'm going to try to whisper to it and say, are you a monster? <laughs> uh, can I do something oh, while Silas does that? Yes. So when Feruza asks about communicating or attack, uh -huh. uh, Neb is, uh, Carolyn, I'm sorry, is going to reach over and scratch Maximilian just behind the ear uh -huh. and say, let's not get your fur wet, dear. <laughs> and when she does that, um, because I'll recast the spell, um, Maximilian shrinks and the fur becomes fins and gills and she mm. picks up from the boat a piranha and places Maximilian the piranha into the water and says, oh, just go, just go take a look for us and see what that is. Fantastic. Ooh. Uh, Maximilian disappears into the deep. Um, you don't have any kind of do you you don't have any kind of psychic connection or anything with max do oh you? no 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 max could just oh. potentially return and in piranha try to tell you okay yeah it's but there's no they're, they're not a familiar this is a, a bestial spirit that i just now have recast oh. to make them a water creature please give um, me a perception check from max from max uh let's do is the dark okay they do have dark vision okay mm -hmm. um just uh, what is their oh it's only a plus two okay like what is their perception i don't even know oh okay that's a 21 for max okay. maximilian the piranha the piranha the piranha uh what is maximilian's ac um 11 plus uh, so it's 12 four, 13 13 and what is his hp um uh 30. 30. <laughs> Neb. You see a disturbance under the water about 10 feet out. Um, as you train your eyes on it, trying to get a better sense, um, there's a little flip of a tail. You think it might be Max's piranha tail, uh, as it tries to kind of get out of the water, but a hand reaches out and grabs it, pulling it back down underneath. Um, this hand in the quick glimpse that you have it in this dark, uh, ominous space um, is webbed between the fingers, uh, covered in a sort of dark black, inky, you know, green scales up and down its claws at the end as it just slaps down on this tail, uh, bringing Max back under the water. Um, you see a little bit of blood as it rises to the surface, floating there. Did Max survive? Because I'm concentrating on the spell. So you, I would you know, know if Ma Max has still survived so far. Okay. Would you Max like to make an attack? Ooh. Oh, heck yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Max is not going to take a chomp in without at least trying to chomp back. Yep. I've never used the water version of this. Water. <laughs> take a chomp in without taking a chomp in. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. Max is probably not going to do very well. Uh, eight, nine, uh. Is it 12 to hit? Nope, you'll miss it. Yeah, mm. that's okay. Um, uh, I don't think I get anything else except, yeah. Um, I know. I'll look up at where, well, I'll tell everybody, but I'll look up at where Silas is because for story reasons, he was trying to send message. Uh, and I'll say, <laughs> well, at least we know this creature is hostile. <laughs> oh yeah, you get nothing, Silas. Uh, no response to your question. I do love that you're just going to go through this whole thing and just ask them if they're monsters. Yeah, it's a very know. efficient method. <laughs> you get no response on this one. Um, there is now no disturbance. Y you do feel, you know, even you, Neb, can no longer see 
the shadows. They have descended too far beneath uh, for you to be able to tell where they are. Um, you can also, you know, all you know is that for the moment, Max is still alive. Um, So I will say, so my yes. my my command to Max had been to go down and take a look. If, yes. if he's being attacked, yes, he's being attacked because obviously I can't uh, give yes. any more commands. Um, um, if you don't issue any, it takes the dodge action and uses its move to avoid damage. So I'm I'm not saying it's going to stop any of this from happening, but that's what it gotcha. would, that's what Max would try to do at this point is is GT gotcha. probably. So. Sorry, I'm having a blank. What does dodge do for him? Uh, it gives attack. Dis it gives advantage, advantage? or disadvantage, disadvantage on attack. Right, right, right. right. Okay. Ooh, so geez. I only. Okay. I was also just realizing that Max, as a That's fish, has happen. almost as many hit points as Neb. That's still gonna happen. Okay. Yeah. Um. Yeah. They are still happening, and you said thirty hit points. Total. Yes. Total. Um. You sense mm. Max is gone. Okay. Um. He tried to escape. You know, in the little, you don't have a psychic connection with him, but again, maybe just a little feeling of like, he tried to pull back and dodge, but these hands just reached out and grabbed him and a, a little, a little, a little fish skeleton floats to the surface of the lagoon. Neb pulls out a, a canteen from nowhere and says, oh, Maximilian, once again, Oh, making the sacrifices so that we can take down a beast. Oh, yes, it's a monster. It's hostile. We should probably kill it, too. Are you drinking the cup before the fish bones? <laughs> it's not a cup. It is a canteen in oh, my okay. imagination. <laughs> I just don't happen to have one here. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> um, and to be clear, we were yes. just told to kill monsters. This one looks really, really hard to get to. So maybe we just keep going and find more monsters that are easier to get to. But that you... one... Go ahead. But I was just going to say, but that one went after her pet, Piranha It's wolf. okay, she can make another one. We can make First another one? off, yes, I can make another one. Second off, that doesn't mean it's okay. Are you scared, Silas? I'm not scared. It just looks like it's going to be an awful lot of trouble. I know, but that's half the fun, right? And <laughs> Neb is going to stand up. Carolyn, Carol is going to yes. stand up and pull yeah. back out an acorn and try to uh, shoot this thing with an acorn. Where are you targeting? Um, well, do I see the creature again? You do I'm not to... see it. No, it is deep. Okay. Beyond then I will... the, the, the obscurity. Then I will try to find it again as I'm holding okay. on to what is now a glowing acorn. So you can use your action to do a perception check to see if you can figure out where it is. Okay. I will do that. That's a natural 20 for a 27. Tw Yay. Okay. It killed my piranha. Dice. It killed your piranha. So <laughs> I'm so unlucky when I try to do big things <laughs> okay but i'm glad you are lucky um so uh as you sort of gaze out along this this reach trying to find the littlest definition this thing is too deep for you to see there's just too much uh you know sort of polluted black lagoon water for you to be actually see this thing however little bit of bubbles rise to the surface directly above where it must be. Now, your general sense is it can get about 10 feet below you before it you lose visibility. So your best targeting is to go about 15 feet below that exact point. And I'll spend the rest of my turn, I guess, pointing that out and saying, mm -hmm. oh, bubbles. Do you know Maybe what's under there, though? Do you know? Can you tell what's under there? We're the not an initiative, so you can um, go if you'd like to. We're, we are oh, no, not okay. yet an initiative. That's not like because if I can uh, attack it as an action, then yeah. okay, you can then do I it. Point... The only creatures who entered initiative were this thing and Max. Okay, <laughs> Max is no longer with us because I'll turn to Fruz and I'll point at the bubbles. And when when you ask, do you know? I'll say, 
Well, let me see if I can show you, and I will try to shoot it. Uh, All right, that with... is going to start initiative, so let's go ahead and roll wow. it. Okay. <laughs> oh, I have advantage though. All right, Neb. Um, I got to roll initiative. I was rolling. Uh, oh, that. no worries. Uh, oh. My, ooh, this narratively makes sense. 15. Great. Way back. All right. And Feruza? I, I'm, I'm trying to check to see. Do I get, I'm playing too many characters. I can't remember. Do I get advantage on initiative of this character? I don't think so. <laughs> I don't. Yeah. No, I don't. But it's a different character. Okay. So I am a nine. Feruza. Robin. Mm-hmm. Uh, six. Six for Robin. Maeve. 22. For Maeve. Silas. Six. Robin, you can go first because this is too much work on this monster. (laughs) (laughs) All right, Nev, go ahead and do your beginning. Uh, So that was a 21 to hit. A 21 to hit will hit. Excellent. Uh, So I'll flick the acorn out and it goes under the water, hits this creature for 22 radiant damage. And um, it starts to glow. Yay. Uh, as the next attack roll nice. made against the target before the end of your turn has advantage. So I make it glow and then I point and I say, does that make it easier for you, Silas? All right, I'll go first then. No, just... <laughs> <laughs> it lights up underneath oh. the water. You now can see this bright form. It looks like a very large person humanoid creature uh but yes it has this webbing in its toes and in its in its hands it has a big webbed rim around its face where gills suck in the 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 water around it its eyes are huge and its mouth is long (coughs) excuse me um (laughs) i keep swallowing my water (laughs) i did a uh, long, elongated, frog-like mouth, uh, but you can also, when it opens its mouth, see just uh, r- you know rows and rows of sharp, piercing teeth. Uh, with that, Maeve, you are up. <coughs> so <coughs> I take out uh, my letter opener, which transforms into a trident. Yes. And I will throw it like a harpoon. At this Yay. creature, which I had advantage on, right? advantage on because of the glowing. Mm-hmm. Yep. Mm-hmm. It goes into the tray. Okay, so that is a. Mm. What was that? That <laughs> was <laughs> hitting my mug. Uh, it <laughs> fell out of the tray and hit my mug. <laughs> was it was a very magic. Sound. <laughs> it was a very pretty sound. Yeah. It was magic. Oh, that's much mm. better. Uh, that's a 20. Uh, 25. To a 25 hit. will hit. Nice. This because we have that for the ranged. Um, fourteen. Uh, fourteen. Uh, uh, sorry, fourteen oh. plus uh, eighteen points of damage. Eighteen. Um, okay. I was like fourteen plus eighteen. What did you no, forget? No. <laughs> no. Um, and uh, it is not wreathed in any uh gotcha. goodies because I'm not up close um, no goodies, you but, got it. but the harpoon reappears in my hand <sighs> very, reforms very in that cool. sort of inky black midnight i love all right that's pretty good um do i hit you with a 22 mave yes oh with a 20 yes with a 22 yes with a 22 i do hit you with a 22 Mm-hmm. It's a it's a physical attack, right? It's a physical attack. Yes. This thing rockets towards you, swimming as fast as it can. It flies out of the water, wrapping its arms around you, Maeve, and pulls you back under, grappling you in its arms as it swims beneath the water. Uh, it is glowing, but it takes you. So it's is going to be. Uh, it swims out. 35 feet away from this boat, dragging Maeve with it beneath the surface. Um, That is its turn. Neb. Maeve is gone. (laughs) You can see the glowing thing about 35 feet away, about 10, 15 feet under the water. The only way you are seeing it is because it is glowing. It's actually not glowing anymore because she Oh, it's not. 
Yeah. Okay. Never mind. First attack against. It, it was the first attack. Yeah. All right. You cannot see them at all. They are gone. Maeve is gone. He's under the water. Okay. You can go first, Miss Rowe. <laughs> it's, it's, it's Carolyn, Carolyn's turn. At the do moment. I have a vague idea of, yeah. of like, because I saw them dive in. Do I have a vague yes. idea of where they might be? Yes. Heading, you can sort of see the direction in which it went, but really after like, you have no idea. It could have stopped short. It could have gone straight down, but pot, you know, we'll go with West again. Yeah. It seemed to go kind of Westish towards the shoreline. I'm gonna take a chance. Yeah. And um, I'd pulled another acorn out of my my hand. I was yes. playing around with it, and then almost in reaction to Maeve going over with this creature, I'm gonna sling it out. But I'm not looking to hit it. I just send it to about where I think it might be, and I have a range of sixty feet. So I'm gonna do. Okay. I mean, I guess it's up to you, but I, I would go in the direction that they uh -huh. they went. Uh huh. Thirty feet. Uh huh. And the acorn is going to explode under the water, <laughs> um, and it's a ten foot radius. Okay. And I can choose what takes damage or not. So uh, only the creature, if it's in that radius, must make a Constitution saving throw. Gotcha. Mm -hmm. Okay. And I've, I, it's a big explosion. I've, I've cast this know. at a very high level. Gotcha. So you said 10 foot radius. Yes. 30 feet out. Yes. So you would hit to 40 and back to 20. Yep. Okay. I'm going to say that that's pretty darn good. So I make a constitution saving throw. Yes. That's only a 14. Uh, my DC is 15. It's going to take Oof. nine necrotic damage. Okay. And then... There you go. Okay, so um, fortunately, I don't need to see her. In addition, one creature of your choice in that area can spend and roll one of its unspent hit dice and regain a number of hit points equal to the roll plus your spellcasting ability modifier, which is four. So Maeve, all of a sudden this creature bleeding from one of its wounds, the blood gets on you. Oh. And instead of burning, it just, it actually feels good in that whatever, wherever it hits you, it heals for whatever you're- It didn't do any damage. It didn't it do just any damage. Grabbed oh. her. Okay, ran. then it just feels good. <laughs> it just feels good. <laughs> oh, well. It, it just grabbed good. her and ran. Oh. It yeah. Just oh, her but her the water here is so rejuvenating. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's like that. that. It's mineral infused. <laughs> It's just, just yummy. And then I will continue to point in that direction and go, ah, that away. All right. Um, fantastic. You're not sure if you hit it or not. There was a underneath the water, a couple of bubbles up at the top. Um, but you took your took your shot. Feruza, you are up. If there's anything this, you can do or would like to do. This is a problem. And she turns to the rest of them and says, I do think there is something that I could do, but I risk hitting her as well. Does your little protection thing that I'm assuming you use some sort of protection with whatever you just did, does it extend to anything we do down there or just to what you just did? Me? Yes, you squirrel. <laughs> I mean, most of the time I can choose friend from foe. I cannot. <laughs> <laughs> so if he dies, everyone dies. No, that's not a point. I don't know how injured she is. And I do think there is something I could do to unearth them both. But the risk here, Faruza says dramatically, since we're in a dream and she can do anything she wants, is that she could get hurt in the process. Do we have well, the ability to heal her? I take that as a no. Um, the ability, sh what? the ability, <laughs> sure. Ooh. All right. Take the risk. We've only got a couple minutes left. <laughs> what? Does he know something? She's, she's I don't. She's, she's gonna, gonna, gonna wake up very soon. <laughs> I feel like the sun is rising. <laughs> really, maybe. I'm running out of acorns. <laughs> okay. Um, the blackout curtains are gonna... working in this little hut. That <laughs> Bruce is gonna look at where the bubbles came up from wherever she hit. Yeah. So she can yeah, make yeah, yeah. general locations. The bubbles okay. come up. 
and she's going to go thunder. I have no idea what that means, but I decided that it was what I'm going to name it. And right as she says that, she's like, it's time to go surfing. And she's going to hit the water with level two thunder waves. <laughs> so, that, <laughs> so that everything comes up out of the water. Like, and the boat capsizes. Yeah. Did you just drop dynamite into a pool? Is that what you just did? <laughs> so, That's amazing. Okay. I warned you. Says Faruza, like, I'm an actual, like... <laughs> So, so wait, okay. So, <laughs> thunder wave. <laughs> when it pushes, is it fifteen feet? Yes, in the, okay. the con save fourteen. Right, I understand for the creatures involved, but I'm for the inanimate water yeah. in the it area. Just, through everything. So you're gonna create a tidal wave. Mm-hmm. Of fifteen feet. I'm gonna run some yeah. some percentile die here. Okay. Love it. Like, we'll take everything out of the water. It I has to come out at I some point. T- I can't take the responsibility of this on my own. <laughs> oh, um, no. I just. <laughs> That's the joke. Wow. I hate the monster all wow. Along. <laughs> so it what? is a ninety-five percent chance that you capture them in this <laughs> thing. <laughs> wow. Uh. So. Wow. As if it was away from you, right? Like you don't can't control that. Yeah. <laughs> it's like a tidal wave away from you, and you see this creature in maze as it holds her in its arms, just like a little mermaid. It's like surfing, body surfing on this tidal wave, moving 15 feet further than where it was. So it's now like uh like 45, 50 feet away from you as I see it them. surfs on this wave going in that direction. Um, <laughs> as and it, as this is happening, yes. Silas is like, you know, minor illusion and everything. Don't go chasing waterfalls. They stick to the rivers and the lakes that you used to. Maybe. It was empty darkness, and suddenly <gasps> you're up in the air, flying on a wave. As this thing holds you, you lock eyes for a moment as it looks at you. <laughs> and I look at it and I say, "Do you want to be my seventh husband?" <laughs> <laughs> you get the impression it kind of does. Um, Robin and Silas, let's knowing guys- knowing the fates of my husbands, <laughs> that's not a bad thing right now. <laughs> Robin and Silas, give us your actions here. Real okay, quick. Robin is going to just be like, "Don't worry, Maeve, I've got you," and <laughs> pull out the vacuum, turn it on to turbo suck, <laughs> and <laughs> start to vortex war, sucking, oh my uh, God. sucking Maeve back and pouring oh. her out into the boat. I love it. <laughs> so. <laughs> Yes, help me mechanically understand how this works. <laughs> it's so I've got 90 feet of my range. Right. Uh, I literally choose a creature and pull them within 90 feet into a different area. Into a different area. And my choosing. If she's restrained or anything like that, it just doesn't make any difference. Uh, Great. It doesn't. Okay, like, it, it, as long as she's willing. As yeah. As long as she's willing. Maeve, you pop right back onto the boat <laughs> as you see this creature's head. It's it's off in the distance there, you know, 50 feet away as it looks at you. It's gills. It's just up at the at the surface of the water. And then basically and as I, that's happening, yes. Silas is like, <laughs> like hurls these two giant magical energy bolts. Go that, for it. Uh, I'm going to try to slam into its Yay. face. That's a 19 on the die. So That'll like hit. And, and Maeve... that's a 20 on the die the last one. Woo! That's a hit. Nice. And a natural 20. What a way to, uh, to so wake up. There's, uh... When I arrive on the boat, I look at everyone and I say, I think I just got engaged. <laughs> Congratulations. <laughs> what a vacuum. 20, 28 points of force damage. <laughs> 28 nice. points of force Are you off in a wedding Perfect. present? I sure am. <laughs> oh, anything, Silas? Uh, sorry? Anything else? 
Um, yeah, if it is still, uh, if it's still, you know, up above oh, it's the still water. still there, yeah. Okay, uh, hit, hit it with that, and then, uh, last thing, again, uh, the long machete, uh, comes, uh, comes and out And it can, there. it can get to this, this, this. Uh, yeah, it, it, it can get, get there, yeah, I just can't move it very fast after it's there. Um, and that is a, an 18 to hit. An 18 will hit. And that is 11 points of force damage. Additionally. 11 points Yay. of force damage. Um, it hits it, it pushes it back a little further as it continues to ride the sort of residual wave of Feruza's uh, surfing tidal wave <laughs> here. Um, as it does, it sort of stops, looks at all of you, raises one webbed hand. <laughs> and sinks beneath the inky black water into the lagoon. Maybe I believe you were just broken up with. <laughs> oh, and no. with that, you all yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, in oh safety, my God. as Neb kind of broken up with. What? And I'm so much little... cooler in my dreams. I just had what? the weirdest dream. Just a little vestiges of this weird dream just kind of are there for a moment. You can hold on to weird little details, the cigarette floating in the air, the, the naked men, the I organ don't want to music, hold on to that, no. <laughs> the intimate moment between between maiden and creature, uh, <laughs> the mauling of a, a wolf creature on top of you, the dragging of your feet. Um, <laughs> this all stays with you just for the briefest of moments before you come back to yourselves and realize where you are and what lays ahead. Thank you all very much <laughs> for playing this, this very strange game this evening. <laughs> I have so many more monsters. Maybe we'll, we'll just make have to pick this... up next time. Yeah. We'll make this a recurring Halloween thing, and I'll keep yes. it. Yes, I love it. Yes, with please. Monsters. Um, please. Because I spent a lot of time today making my own yeah. universal <laughs> I mean, that's monsters. Um, so I'm very excited, and they did not do any of the very cool things I wanted them to do. Oh, oh. we have to continue then. Yeah, we'll continue. absolutely. We will figure out how I will turbocharge them. <laughs> one way or oh, God, that's right. I have one question for Miss Beckett. Yes. You take checks. Yes. <laughs> 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 Anyways, happy Halloween to everyone at home. Thank you so much for spending your evening with us. Uh, I, whether this is on the day or the VOD later, we're so excited to be able to spend this spooky season with you. Um, we adore you all. Thank you, players. Thank you, Josh. Thank you, everyone at home. And remember that you are what you believe yourself to be. Good night. <laughs>